Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Greetings from sunny Pennsylvania. Have you ever wanted to do something that maybe you had never done before and therefore it was impossible? And so you wanted to uh, tell all your friends about it because you were so excited to do this impossible thing. And uh, you were a little bit embarrassed about even thinking that you were worthy of this impossible thing. And then uh, before you know it, you outthought yourself and your friends discourage you and you stop trying to do this impossible thing. And now you're exactly where you were before you started thinking about doing this impossible thing. And maybe you've got something you want to do now that is, seems impossible. I'm going to help you with that today in our session. We are uh, in Pennsylvania. I'm doing a couple of speaking engagements here, three actually total. And can't wait to get started. It's sunny. It's uh, spring is about to happen here. We're in central Pennsylvania. I was trying to think of what the state motto is for Pennsylvania. Michigan's the Wolverine state. New York's the Empire state. Um, I think California is the Sunshine State. I don't know what P Pennsylvania is. If you know, please type it into the comment section. And if you're calling in from a state today, hey, Dave Sanderson, how are you? We'll talk about you in a minute, too. <laughs> Michelle, welcome. If you're from a state that has a motto like the such and such state, just type that down below. You don't have to tell us what state it is. We'll have fun, uh, some fun guessing today. We're going to talk about how to do the impossible today. Of course, we're not talking about miracles or um, ethereal things like this. We're talking about actual stuff that you want to do in your life that just seems impossible. And before we do that, I want to encourage you to let me know if you want to be part of my private Facebook page, which I'm going to be launching soon. We're getting getting it together. Thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Tanya. And so um, if you would like to be part of this private Facebook group, like-minded people trying to do good things with their lives, help people, um, uh, have more fun, be more productive, this kind of thing. If you just like my messages in general, it's a good, maybe a good thing to sign up for this Facebook group. It's free. And uh, send me a message in my Facebook that you're interested in it. I'll get you a, a, a private invitation and we'll get you in. It'll be a private thing, just, just a few of us, or I'm not sure how many people will be interested, but we'll, uh, we'll set as many people up as we can. Also, uh, if you like me in video format, I really appreciate you checking me out on YouTube. I've got um, a subscription button there. It's a red button on YouTube. Just search Michael Angelo Caruso on YouTube. You can do that in another window, I think, right now. And, um, and when you click that silver bell and you're subscribed, you'll be notified of new videos. So more good content coming your way. You can listen whenever you want. It's pretty cool. Hey, Cousin Mary, how are you? Nice to see you. Or nice to, nice to see you on the, on the call. Desmond, welcome. Dennis Desmond. Jay Greenwood, how are you, brother? So Dave Sanderson's on the call today, and I met Dave at uh, another talk that I gave out here on the East Coast, actually. It was in New Jersey, and, um, and everybody said what a great story he had, and I was just kept hearing in the hallways about Dave, and, and then finally I saw his name in the program. I think I actually met him the night before he, that we both spoke, and it turns out Dave Sanderson does have a great story. He survived the miracle on the Hudson. This was that plane that crashed didn't crash. It was an emergency landing, what they call a water ditch, into the Hudson River. Remember this? Back in, I think, 2009. And uh, Dave, say hi to everybody. Feel free to give us your website if you'd like. He's a terrific person. And he had me as a guest on his, it's called Flash Daily Briefing. And if you, if you want to uh, promote this, Dave, and send people to it, I know that my segments are running. We did five of them. My segments are running this week. Uh, so this is for people that have Amazon Echo products like Alexa. I think I had this right. I'm learning about it still. And I also had Dave on my blog, uh, on my podcast. So you can find our video on YouTube. So when you go to YouTube to subscribe, you can listen to Dave tell me and, and talk with me about his story. It is fascinating uh, what he went through and, and the lessons, the life lessons that he drew from this. I'm so lucky to have been at this event where he spoke. I, 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 uh, my heart went out to all these people who were on this plane in the middle of the Hudson River on the coldest day of the year and to actually speak to a survivor uh, and learn about it and, and extract uh, not only lessons from it, but his great energy is, is was a real privilege. So I thank you for that, Dave. 
Um, okay, so we're going to talk today about your miracles and the things that you can do in your life to do what's considered to be the impossible. And I want to open with a little, hey, Tony Anthony, how are you? I want to open with a little um, epilogue, epitaph about a guy named Roger Bannister. Type into the comment section if you know who Roger Bannister is. Kelly Hayes, how are you? Roger Bannister passed away, sadly, last month. He, uh, I think, died of natural causes. He was an older gentleman. And uh, he did something really famous. He did something a lot of people would consider to be impossible. And he rewrote uh, an entire um, industry, if you will. It was the running industry, which wasn't even an industry in 1954 when Roger Bannister achieved the impossible. Roger Bannister, uh, in 1954, ran a four-minute mile for the very first time. No human being, I don't know if you can conceive, I, I can't even get my head around this, how important this is, that in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, no human being had ever run a mile in less than four minutes. Hey, John, how are you? Hey, Chris. And so in 1954, this, this, this st student, medical student, runs a mile in less than four minutes, and everybody notices, man, this is a huge, huge thing. Well, records get broken all the time, right? There's an old saying that uh, things that aren't supposed to happen happen every day. So Roger Bannister gets all these accolades, and people figure, well, you know, no one else will ever do this again because a four-minute mile was so unachievable before this day. Uh, hail Roger Bannister, right? Well, guess what? The record for this impossible feat. I keep doing air quotes for impossible because nothing is impossible, ladies and gentlemen. You can do anything you want to do. It just takes a plan and commitment and maybe, maybe a little luck, although I've, I've done a lot of cool things without any luck at all. I've done a lot of cool things with bad luck when I, when I get right down to it. Hi, Kim, nice to see you. And so, uh, so this record that, it's a record now because Roger Bannister runs the four minute mile, the record stands for 45 days. Nobody had ever run a four minute mile in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And the new record stands for 45 days when a guy named John Landy from Australia beats Roger Bannister's record. 45 days later. Within two years, three years, a high school kid runs a four minute mile. This is now officially a thing. And so the reason I tell you this story is because Everybody thinks something's impossible until it's done, and then guess what? It's possible. It's possible. And in your world, you know, Bannister's from Britain, Great Britain. John Landy was from Australia. In your world, in your little corner of the world, in your neighborhood, in your company, in your department, people will say, that's never been done before. And therefore, it's ridiculous. But if it's a good thing, it's, if it's meritable, and if you think you have... Uh, the passion for it, and you think it would be a good achievement for you, you should do it, man. You should do it. And I'm going to give you some tips for, for how to get that done. So these are some suggestions for self-motivation, and some of them may seem intuitive or you've thought of them already, but I'll bet you don't put them into motion. You know, I bet they're not in your life, right? If they were, you would have done the impossible already. So the first thing is when you're trying to achieve the impossible, it helps if you're a good person it helps if what you're trying to achieve is actually a good thing, you know? If, you're, if, you're, if your big goal, your impossible goal is cracking a safe or, uh, you know, uh, robbing a casino in Las Vegas, I can't help you. It has to be, you have to be a good person wanting to do a good thing. That's the arena I work in. That's the arena I, um, I have experience in. And so uh, I would recommend being a good person and doing good things. That's the first thing. Second thing is, your impossible goal should be big and bold, right? Because anybody can do, you know, gradually improve and gradually do um, uh, an increased um, bandwidth and increased productivity. Uh, everybody can become smarter over time. But if you really want to make quantum leaps, not gradual uh, steps, but quantum leaps, right? If you want to get noticed, if you want to have big reward, in a lot of cases, you have to do things in a big way. And so it helps if your goal is big, right? So, um, for example, you could say, I want to write a uh, free report on how to do something, 10 tips on how to do something. Or you could say, I'm going to write me a book. 
which is bad grammar. Don't put that in the book. I'm going to write a book, right? That's a big goal. It takes a long time to write a book. A book is, uh, by most accounts, about 120 pages, maybe longer. And it takes time to get that kind of content in there. It takes time to put it into shape, time to edit it, time to find um, uh, maybe the money to publish it if you're going to self-publish. So writing a book is a big goal, right? Uh, and so be bold with whatever it is. Don't say, I want to lose three pounds. If you're overweight and you need to get in shape, make it 30 pounds, right? Make it something that you'll be very proud of, something that somebody will notice, something, more importantly, something that will really help you feel better, maybe even help you live longer. Losing three pounds is not going to make much of a difference. So make the goal bold. Next tip, and this is a hard one. I want you to start ignoring all of the people close to you. <laughs> because when you state your impossible goal, people will tell you it's impossible. By definition, you can't do it. And your friends who, quote, are looking out for you, right? All these air quotes today. They're looking out for you. They have your best interest in mind. They don't want you to waste your time. They'll tell you it can't be done. What do you want to do that for? That's a pipe dream. Uh, no, come on, let's go out drinking tonight, you know? Uh, you say, I want to write a book. No, let's go out drinking tonight. You see that what your friends will say to you sometimes? Your friends won't say, yeah, you're right. You should stay home and write the book. They'll say, come on. No, you could take a night off. So what happens is the people closest to you, and they don't do this to sabotage you. They don't do it because they're consciously trying to ruin your life. But people around you don't want you to change too much. It's true in my life, right? Family, friends. When I change too much, it makes it harder for people to understand me and, and, and um, keep me in a place where they can, I wouldn't say a box necessarily, but keep me in a place where they can figure me out, right? This is one of the problems with my social life because I'm in Pennsylvania or I'm in New York or I'm in New Jersey. People, it's hard for me to associate with me. They, they, they can't relate to my lifestyle, right? I have what's called a business lifestyle. And so I don't have a nine to five. I don't go to work. I don't commute. I don't have kids. Let's break it down. So because if you start doing things that keep people from relating to you, it's harder for them to support you, right? It's not a dig against them or anything. It's just a fact, right? Hi, Julia. How are you? Hey, Steve. Cook. So uh, the idea is, uh, just to review now, we're going to be a good person and we're going to do good things. We're going to be bold in our impossible goal. We're going to start ignoring friends who tell us it can't be done. It's the only way, people. And the last tip I have is you have to reward yourself. You can even put the reward system in place prior to, like, I'm going to write me a book, right? And I'm going to sell me a thousand copies. And let's say if the book sells for $20, 20 times a thousand, you get the idea. And so you figure you're going to reward yourself with some sort of booty at the end which is not a bad way to go. Hey, Coach Chantel, how are you? Coach Chantel and I had a great uh, experience with a TED Talk recently, and uh, she, she went to the university uh, or the Windsor, Windsor TEDx and kicked butt, ladies and gentlemen. This is a woman who has won uh, multiple consecutive championships at the University of Windsor with her basketball team. She's like world famous in the basketball circles. I hope you're doing great, Chantel. And so this idea, and, and she knows about achieving impossible things because she, when she went to the University of Windsor, they, they were like in the bucket. Man, this team hadn't won in forever. And uh, now everybody knows who the University of Windsor is. She, she is a truly, uh, 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 she's made this happen, this impossible thing. Hey, Ronald. And so I want to tell you a couple of stories, quick little stories about my life, about some things that didn't go well and some things that went really well, because it doesn't always work out. You know, you know, some of these motivational speakers, you can do anything, everything's always going to work out fine. Guess what? It doesn't always work out fine. When I was in high school, I was playing trumpet and my father played trumpet. I idolized my father and I wanted to be like my father. And I think, I think my father would have been okay if I was like him. You know, he wanted me to be my own person. But he also, I think, liked the fact that I was following in his footsteps. My father's name was Michael. They called him Mickey. My name is Michael. My father played trumpet. I played trumpet. I'm the eldest son. You get the picture here? And so it's time for me to go to something called solo and ensemble. 
if you uh, if you remember this from when you were in school, it's a contest where you would go and play the trumpet in my case or clarinet, my brother Joe's case, and you would compete for um, medals. They call them uh, blue ribbon is first place, red ribbon I think is second place, there's a third place, no ribbon, <laughs> fourth place. Um, it's a different day now where everybody gets a ribbon, but you, you worked really hard to get that blue ribbon uh, at solo and ensemble. And my dad chose a piece for me in my sophomore year in high school. I don't know why we didn't wait to my senior year, but we did it early on. That's my memory anyway. Maybe it was later. But the piece was a very, very difficult piece called Carnival of Venice. Carnival of Venice. And very complicated piece. Lots of notes. If you looked at the music for this, it'd be nothing but black, right? Because there's all these 16th notes. And there's even a thing called double tonguing. Uh, which is uh, not as bad as it sounds. But double tonguing is this way of making, it's like a trick way of playing the trumpet where it sounds like you, you're playing really fast. And my father agreed to teach me the Carnival of Venice, you know, and, and because I, the Carnival of Venice for a kid my age was impossible to play, right? And, and certainly impossible to get a first division, a blue ribbon. And uh, so my dad promised to help me with it because otherwise I would have no chance. So he tried to help me the best he could. The truth is I probably didn't practice enough. And I went to this thing and I was embarrassed. <laughs> I was humbled. And I've got a piano playing accompaniment. I don't even know if I got through all of the sections of the piece, right? It's got four or five sections in it. And I think I might've just waited for <laughs> like the time to run out and started the next section. And um, it's supposed to be a learning experience, so I try not to be too hard on myself. But, man, to this day, my face gets red. I get flushed when I think about how embarrassing this was, this impossible thing that I had tackled and failed miserably. There were other people in the room. I had to come back to school and tell everybody, how'd you do on your <laughs> solo ensemble, Michael? Uh, not good. Not good, you know. And next year, I chose a rather simple piece to play. <laughs> But my point is it doesn't always work out good, everybody. Later on in the music business with my brothers, we ended up, this little small band, this little combo from Trenton, Michigan, ended up opening for acts like Rick Springfield, Corey Hart, Joan Jett. Um, and we were very proud of that, you know. I don't know that our music was perfect when we opened for these bands, but that was a long way from the depths of Carnival of Venice and just massacring that trumpet piece to opening for for national acts and in some cases international acts. So I was able to redeem myself with another form of impossible task is my point. So, so the challenges never stop coming if you're open to them. But just because you fail in one doesn't mean you can't be successful the next time around. In fact, the failure can help you become more successful, right? It was the great physicist Richard Feynman who said, fail as fast as you can. Because when you fail fast, it allows you to move on to the next success. And so that was my story, uh, my two stories about the music business. I indeed have written a book at a time when I thought it was impossible for me to write a book. Now, I cheated. I started with an audio book about my father. My father had passed away in 1996, and uh, he had written some letters to me and my brothers. My cousin Mary may remember this. And so when my father passed as therapy and as a tribute to my father, I read my father's letters into a tape recorder and created an audio book. It was one of my very first audio, uh, very first informational products, and it sold a lot of copies, man. This is still available in uh, CD uh, at my website if you're interested. I, I didn't tell you to sell you, but if you're interested, it's there. But it was an impossible task for me to create uh, a book. And in fact, I, I did cheat a little because I did an audio book before I did a real book. But that laid the groundwork for the real book, the first real book later on, you see. And I did a booklet before I did the book. The booklet was only 36 pages. The book was something like 140 pages. So there are ways to get to impossible. There are stages to it, is my point. You should never, ever, ever give up if you're a good person and if you're trying to do good things. I'm going to take some questions and answers in a minute. I'll help you with anything I can. Uh, so that you can achieve the impossible in your life, whatever you're interested in. But you can do it, man. You can do anything. And it, and it can be a social goal. It can be a business goal. It can be a health goal. I'm big on health goals because if you're not feeling good, it's hard to do anything. So we've got to get you to a place where uh, we get you to your fighting weight 
and we get you to a place where you don't have a lot of inflammation and a lot of firefights going on within your own body, right? Inflammation is, they're saying now that it's not cholesterol that causes heart disease, it's, it's inflammation, right? And where does inflammation come from? Bad diet, sugar, this type of thing. So whatever your goal is, health, uh, happiness, maybe you wanna move, right? You wanna get out of your neighborhood, get some, take, take the family to higher ground. You can do it. Maybe you want to make more money. It's not always about money, but sometimes it is. You can do it. And, and I hope this has been uh, somewhat inspirational for you. I hope that you understand that this can happen for you. But you have to apply yourself, and you have to work on it every single day. Almost anything that I've ever done that was important, I immerse myself in it. I'm on it, man. I don't put it aside. I don't get distracted. Um, and I do take some teasing from my friends. You know, can't, why can't you do this? I don't think I've seen a complete uh, sporting event, a two-hour, three-hour, if you're watching baseball, four-hour event in years. You know why? Because I have other things in my life I want to do. And, and some of you say, well, you lost me there, Michael, because I like my sporting events. So that's good. That's fine if that's what you want, how you want to spend your time, right? Sometimes I just need to golf nine holes to feel the club in my hand again. I don't need to do 27 holes. <laughs> you know? So um, there are personal choices. The quality of life is based on the quality of your decisions. And that's that, man. So um, questions about anything we've talked about or comments uh, while you're typing those in, if you have any. Uh, I am here to speak at two leadership conferences. One of them includes a, a youth group that I want to uh, spend some time with. I'm going to meet a congressman I hear in my travels this uh, week. And uh, hey, Sean Parker, how are you? And uh, soon I'm speaking at an event. Remember I told you about the Dave Sanderson story, and that's how I met Chantel. I was speaking at an event. Uh, soon I'm uh, speaking at an event with Erin Brockovich. Remember her? I, I, the name, I heard the name. I, I had to go watch the movie again because I had forgotten who she was. Uh, the Julia Roberts movie about Erin Brockovich. She was like one of the first uh, whistleblowers, I guess you would call them. And, and she... Uh, she uh, is going to be this event that we're doing coming up. So um, little, uh, little known fact about Facebook Live, sometimes what you type in, hey, Dave Bradley, sometimes what you type in shows up after I've signed off, and I always go back through the thread, and I type in uh, answers and comments, and I'll also provide some links of things that we referenced in this call. I'll get you to Dave Sanderson. I'm making some notes here, things I need to get you to. Um, I'll tell you about the Dear Michael Angelo project if you care to hear about it. And uh, what else? Um, oh, the, uh, the, the recently departed Roger Bannister. So I support you. I support your impossible, your impossible goal, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 20 or 60, right? A lot of people, you know, when they're retired, they have goals, but the goals become really small because they, they think that they're, you know, they're old and feeble and the best of their life is behind them. If you're going to be an average person in the United States, you're going to live 20, what, 24 more years, 28 more years after age 60. 28 years. You think you can make a, a dent in something that's impossible in 28 years, especially now that you're not working? You bet. So... If you've got an impossible goal, you want to share it with me in the thread. Hey, Valentina, please do. And everyone in the in the uh, everyone on this call and everyone that listens to it afterward will will give you support. Total strangers will be rooting for you. It'll be amazing. So thank you very much for being on the call today. I appreciate you. Uh, now go to YouTube if you will. If you like the video content, go to michaelangelocaruso.com, uh, Michelangelo Caruso channel. Click subscribe. And ring that silver bell. Click that silver bell so you're notified of all new videos. Thanks very much, everybody. And the private Facebook page will be launched soon. Again, if you're interested, just message me and so I can send you a pro proper invitation. I wish you the best with your impossible goals. See you later.